welcome to Magical Maiden's Jewelry Tutorials. Today what I have for you is a sequence necklace with a flower. Now how you make the flower in the center piece. Now I already went ahead and did that because it's the most time consuming. So if you can't see the flower, if I hide these two ends, can you see it now? Just around with the middle piece. So let me move these slight pieces, these little pieces of chain. So this is what you got. See the flower? Now you can do it long ways if you want, or you can do it this way. Today we're going to do it by the side. Okay, some of you may have seen my jewelry tutorial where I made the large sequence earrings. It was my um, second to last tutorial. The next one was me showing you what they look like on, okay? So you're going to do the same premise, but with a smaller sequence like that. But instead of making these earrings, which you certainly can do, we're going to make like a flower and then add these two pieces because what we're going to do is we're going to attach more sequence. So you're going to get a few and if you're not sure about what sequences to get and all that, I already showed in another tutorial all the sequences. So I'm just going to briefly touch on that. So I keep them in a little tin, but they're a mixture of shapes and sizes. Some are clear iridescent, some are iridescent, and some are just silver. And there's different sizes. They'll come like this, 99 cents at Hobby Lobby. And they usually have 50, 60, 80 percent or 40 percent off or even 20 percent off. So it's even cheaper than just 99 cents. So you see these, they come in different sizes. These are like squares and then these are the larger round ones. So you might want to get like three or four packages of these. It's not going to break the bank, they're not that expensive. So what I usually do is I save these little cookie tins that you know from the bakery and I clean them and air them out and then I I put my sequences in there. Now you may not want to mix all the different sizes because then you have to hunt but I pick them out and I'm going to put this aside for now but I will I will need them. So I took out the iridescence. So these are going to be with all the iridescence you can certainly mix it I'm going to show you in my little thing. They even have really small. That's kind of difficult to work with. Okay, you're going to need a push pin and you're going to need some jump rings and your jewelry working tools. So now you can make a bracelet like this by attaching the same thing after you do this using this template. And you can watch that jewelry tutorial making the large sequence uh, earrings. We're going to attach. So now you can make a bracelet just using these and then at the end you know you attach them to jump rings. You poke the other hole on the other side because they only have one hole. Put your jump rings in at the end you put a jump ring and on the other end you put a clasp. So that could be a cute little bracelet if you want it to be a bracelet. But if you want it to be a necklace, we're going to do the same thing. And then maybe at the end, get some, I save my chains, my scrap pieces. Uh, depending on how long you want it, I don't want it to hang too long. I'm going to use that. Now, if you have one of these, that's great. You can see what length you want your chain. Okay. And it helps you in one to have one of these. I can't fit the whole thing in, but you know what I'm talking about. So I'm not really sure how long I want my chain to be. But this this helps you with sizes if you're not sure how long you want it. And some of you use that and some of you don't. So what you could do is, and then in the end, you just attach a chain, or you can do sequences all the way up. But I don't like to waste all my sequences, and I save all my scrap pieces of chain. So you can get chain anywhere, whether you want it on a roll, an old necklace. So this is just excess chain I've had laying around. 
and I always save my pieces they're gonna need so once you create these and I show you in the diagram how you're gonna hook it up and I show you on that tutorial so again if you want to go see that step by step you can or you could just look at the diagram and see where you got to poke your holes definitely get a push pin and either uh, a self-healing mat because you're gonna and or a cardboard as well and you're gonna push the pins directly across from the other hole so now that I've gone and made this and I want you to get a look so again we could even do it this way hanging like a little pendant but I like it the other way and that's what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna put this piece aside and I'm gonna move the chains off the board and I'm going to start hooking these up on the sides. So the first thing I'm going to do, I have to make, I have to make other holes. So directly across from this hole, but not too close to the edge, I'm going to go ahead and put my push pin, see? Then I'm going to gently hold it and put the push, push pin through and then flip it over and do it on the other side so it's easy to get your jump ring. So you might want to do that first to all your sequences before you start. It, it'll go faster if you do that and then we can hook them all up. So I'm going to do that and I'll be back when now I'm ready. You can to do this with up. the iridescent like I'm doing or like I said they do have the same size in the non iridescents in here as well. So it's up to you. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is get my jump rings out. So I have a bunch of jump rings and it depends. You can have the bright silver or the duller, you know, darker silver. It depends. And these are four millimeter jump rings. You don't want them too big because this is dainty. Normally I would use a six millimeter. So I'm just going to put a few here. I don't want them traveling all over the place and losing them. So I only have so many of them. And... Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just briefly show you and then I'll do the rest off camera. So I'm going to open the jump ring. And this one already has the hole facing out. You Okay? And remember I showed you just use your push pin to make the holes. So now I'm going to get one of my jump rings and I'm going to put the sequence after I attach it to the one sequence, I'm going to be putting it on the other sequence. And then I'm going to close it. And I'm going to make sure it's nice. And I hear that click. But I'm just going to make sure it's closed. And it's evenly closed. So now I got that one. And now you have the hole. And so you're just going to repeat the process. You're going to put another one. You know, and another one and another one until you get the length you want and then I'm going to attach the chain I'm not sure how long but this meets right where it goes halfway around your neck where it's showing and then the rest will be the chain and I'll let you see how it hangs on my neck so it's very simple to do and you can see how I attach them and how I used my push pin to make the holes so I'm going to do the other side now. I have to make a hole on this one and then attach the rest of my sequences to them. Now I've attached it. It's eight four millimeter jump rings on nine sequences using a push pin to make the holes. Okay, and my jewelry working tool. So now that I have it, it's going to look like this. You want to make sure they're all lying down flat and not twisted so that when you hook the chain it doesn't look weird when you're wearing it and all twisted okay because then we're going to hook the chain so now what i'm going to do is i don't need that much chain i like a certain amount now 16 inches is usually the typical amount for a choker but I wanted a little bit of I just wanted a little bit longer than a choker so I might make it 17 and a half maybe 18 inches so I'm gonna see I'm gonna put a little chain and I do have a knot over there but I don't think I need that much chain so I'm gonna hook a chain 
about that much. I'm going to cut where that knot is. I'm going to take my cutters, inches long. So I'm going to hook this to one side. Make sure you have enough chain to the five inches before you start cutting away. Okay, so I have roughly around the same size. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach one chain to one side and one chain to the other. Now one side gets a jump ring, the other one gets a jump ring and a clasp. Okay. Okay, so I might have said I had nine on either side, but I only had eight because I was counting the ends. Now, you can do the flower part and the ends go with it, but then you're going to add the eight additional sequences, okay? So I just wanted to make that clear with seven four millimeter jump rings, okay, on both sides. So I wanted to clear that up, but you, of course, can add as many as you want. You can go all the way around. So we're, this is the back facing. So now what I'm going to do is I've gotten some chain and I'm going to attach it with the jump ring there. But now I'm looking for the kind of clasp. And I have many kinds of clasps. I have lobster claw, claw clasps or the round ones. Whatever you prefer. I don't know if you're seeing that. These are the round ones and these are the lobster claws. I like the lobster claws better. But for this project, I'm going to just use something smaller. Alrighty, so now I'm going to take some jump rings. You can use the 4 millimeter, or you can use a bigger one to attach it. But since I've already done that, I'm going to use a 4 millimeter there. I have one to attach this. Then another 4 millimeter to attach that but so here we go now make sure that this is going to fit through that small tiny chain first of all otherwise I have to get a thinner because even though they're smaller they may not be as thin so that's perfect it goes right through there now I'm going to get my sequence and I'm going to put the jump ring through the hole in the sequence and again using the 4 millimeter jump ring. Just find me when I'm making jewelry so I can see if I like the length. This one I'll have to get up and go find a mirror clasp on the left. So that's what I'm going to do first is attach that before I attach it there. And you want to make sure that this piece is facing up so that when you're putting your necklace on, okay? So I'm going to attach it just like this, see, with the little piece up. I don't know if you're getting that, so I'm going to raise this with the little piece up. And I'm going to put a little 4 millimeter jump ring right there. So I'm going to get my jump rings. I need I'm going to just get three out. And I might have to trim more chain off. If I do it, I'm going to do it from here and, and see. So I'm going to close this, make sure it's closed. Okay, now I'm going to try it on and I'm going to see if this is too long or too short. Uh, it's better than if it's longer so I can easily make it shorter and I'm going to put it in this way and that's why I did this. So here it is. Okay, So here it is. That's what it's going to look like. And I have the chain all the way up there. It starts with your collarbone. You know, right here's your collarbone. Here's your shoulder. So it's a little past your collarbone. And it's good because you wouldn't notice. Okay, so that's what it should look like. Like the flower that you make, and then that, and then that's the chain of the clasp. And here you go. 
Now this is in the daylight. Uh, it's not sunny. It was sunny. Let's see the little flower that you make. It really looks nice and shiny and it's really easy and affordable again. Again, it's only 99 cents for the sequence. And then you just need a clasp, jump rings, and some chain. And there you go. Easy, fast, and affordable.